Hey, here we go with X's and O's on the KFAM Minnesota Vikings radio network and Vikings.com. I'm Paul Allen, joined by Minnesota Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell, courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery off a very, very exciting victory against the Atlanta Falcons, four in a row for the Minnesota Vikings. Here come the Saints this weekend. Dobbs. Now, he's played on some decent teams, but never a high-end passing squad with a play-calling head coach. I just think it's beautiful that there seems to be so much untapped with the young man because of circumstance, even seven years into the league. Do you see it like that? Yeah, and, and the best part about Josh is he's got some great experience, maybe in different offenses, different circumstances. As I told him, whatever they've been, we're going to use that experience as a positive. But I, what, what I want him to do, looking at his opportunity here, uh, is just know that he's going to be completely supported uh, both schematically and from just a support system of a coaching staff and a locker room uh, that is as close-knit and, and highly functional as any in the National Football League. Um, and I believe he's got a chance to, to truly you know, put some of the best football he's played on tape, not by doing anything more than what he's capable of. Right. Very smart, very athletic, throws it at a high level. Um, I think he's going to be a great fit. Uh, he demonstrated that in some really tough circumstances on Sunday. Now let's see, can we build upon that effort, you know, as a unit? And the, the Saints defense is, let's put it this way, a little different than the last one you saw with Cam Jordan and Demario Davis and a defensive head coach. Fair yep. way to look at it. Yeah, they're, they're one of the better defenses, I believe, in the league. You know, you can turn on the tape, and it doesn't take long to see those names you just mentioned. Lattimore, they've got two really good safeties. Um, I think uh, Adobe's playing really good at the other corner spot. Um, they're very, very deep. They're physical. They fly around, and I think Dennis Allen is one of the, you know, really good defensive minds in the NFL. He's going to watch a lot of our tape, what we've done, and they're going to be a really tough outfit to move the ball against. Our execution's got to be at a premium. We, we've got to make sure we don't have negative plays uh, that set our team back and just consistently try to get all 11 guys doing their job and see how comfortable we can get Josh throughout the day and still a new system. Now, now many quarterbacks, back to Dobbs in the Atlanta game, have eluded on charging defenders, but they don't all get away using sheer strength. Yeah which, I mean, he, he did it multiple times. Uh, Dobbs has that uh, yeah. just naturally, doesn't he? He does, and he's got uh, – I don't think he gets enough credit for his ability, especially on the scrambles, to, to get hidden yardage in the game that really defines a, a lot of – when you look back on even his performances early in the year in Arizona, uh, you know, at Seattle, they get a penalty to back him up. I think their first and goal from the 20-something yard line – he zone reads for a touchdown. There were some plays against San Fran, extending plays against the, one of the best defenses in the league, and just moving the chains, you know, matriculating the ball down the field. Yeah. Uh, not by scheme, but by sheer will, talent, understanding of <laughs> it's man coverage, and they don't have somebody uh, responsible for me. I can go get this first down right now. He did it multiple times on Sunday for us. And then when we needed to, uh, he was able to drop back and make some huge throws in that two-minute drive to go win the football game. Uh, just a little teaching point for yours truly, maybe those watching or listening on KFAN. When, when you have a quarterback who can be a legitimate running threat, does that generally mean less man defense, like more zone defense? So I guess the corners don't turn their back to the... Yeah, they don't want to take their eyes off of the quarterback. Either that or you're going to get man defense with a player responsible for the quarterback, either okay. a spy... Uh, from the linebacker position, you may see a safety dropping down with the ability to help on any crossing routes, but also be responsible if the quarterback does take off. Uh, the interesting thing for us is historically we've seen those types of defenses be instead of that guy dropping down to account for the quarterback, he's doubling Justin Jefferson oh, yeah. or Jordan Addison or TJ Hawkinson. Um, so I think defenses are going to have to make a decision uh, if they want to try to continue to provide outlets and help on coverages uh, for some of the matchups that we have, especially when Justin does come back. Um, Josh is going to have some opportunities to change the game with his legs, and in doing so will probably force people to make the alternative decision of make sure they account for that. That will mean single coverage for people, and, and we can go to work there. Now, your defense, holy cow. Uh, Green Bay, strip sack at the 15. They go backwards, turnover on downs. Atlanta, the Lorenzo Carter recovery down to the one. Yep. They go backwards and get a field goal. Yep. 
and then you eat up that middle eight you talk about so frequently and score with Madison. All right, that, I mean, that's textbook. Strong collective effort, right? Yeah, that's what it's really been. I mean, whether it's complimentary football, that's great. That's what we intend to do every Sunday. But it's the uh, responses to some of this adversity that maybe we didn't get early on in the season. Maybe a negative play turned into seven points the other way for the offense or vice versa. We go you know, defense gives up a long drive and then we go out and go three and out or we turned it over. Uh, there just didn't seem to be that synergy to be able to play true complementary football. And what complementary football is, it's not always good stacked with good stacked with good. It's the ability to overcome some of those negative parts that happen in our game, whether you want to coach, uh, you know, each and every minute of the day and night and game plan all day. There's still going to be bad stuff that happens sometimes. Uh, the teams that win in this league overcome it and find a way to come out better on the other side. Oh, we, I mean, we saw it all training camp just with the untrained eye, and you talked about it a lot, penetrating Flores' defense, yep. which was new to so many. So then you start playing the games. Is it fair to say that while everybody was learning the nuance of such a unique defense, that it's resonating incredibly well with all of them now? Yeah, I think they have ownership of it. Um, there's many times in a game where Flo gives them the ability to check in and out of calls based upon what they feel like the offense is doing. Um, and it has been, you know, huge critical plays for us, getting off the field on third down, uh, maybe getting to the quarterback, forcing a negative play, a, a fumble against Carolina, you know, a, an incomplete on a big third down to get us the ball back. Um, all of those things, they have ownership now. We're applying new principles to the defense each and every week based upon some of the things we've previously done. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting for me to sit back and watch. Coach Flo and his staff are doing a tremendous, tremendous job. And then the ownership of the players, the leadership of Harrison and Jordan and uh, Harrison Phillips up front, Daniil Hunter, Byron Murphy, Josh Metellus, Cam Bynum. I mean, these guys are playing great football. Um, and they're striving to get better each and every week, and, and that's what's showing up on the grass. So, so, I mean, offensively, this would be the case, too, once everybody is wrote on exactly the expectations. But defensively, given it's so much newer than those who were with your offense last year, does that give Flores the confidence to take more chances, maybe get more aggressive with, with certain more risky-type calls? You know what I mean? I think so, and, and even when... Uh, the offense has the perfect play. The John U. Smith touchdown the other day, they've got a screen called. Uh, we're in an all-out pressure. It's a great play, great design, um, great execution by those guys. There's no panic. You know, we're going to be right back up on the field, uh, you know, their next opportunity with the same mindset that, yeah, they might have got one, but, yep. you know, over the course of four quarters, we're going to make our plays. We're going to force enough negatives to give our football team a chance to win and uh, that's what I love about the group right now. Now, this, um, this might be the best Daniil Hunter has ever played the run. I mean, at least in, in my opinion, from the outside. What, what's key about that, him playing so physically in the run game? Well, the way you saw it is how I saw it. I saw Daniil Hunter play the best football game along the line of scrimmage in the run game that I've seen since we've been here. Daniil's made a lot of plays, but consistently – dominating on the edge, dominating, making plays, turning the ball back inside on wide zone plays, uh, taking on two, three blockers and still winning uh, down in the low red to force, uh, you know, an opportunity for his teammates to make a tackle and get off the field. Uh, those stops that he made or those individual effort plays that he made go right along with his 10 sacks. And uh, really, in my mind, Daniil's been one of the better defensive players in the league this year. Hawkinson, Kevin O'Connell, Alexis and O's uh, deep stretch with this part of the show. Um, Hawkinson sure is giving you not only some big plays, but some timely plays. And there's a toughness factor there, too. With, I mean, he basically won the game uh, at Green Bay you yeah. know, by shaking a tackle and dragging somebody. Then he went Mark Bavaro on it. At, um, at Atlanta, yeah. dragging people like 10 yards. I mean, I'm not saying I never thought he was tough, but, I mean, we're just seeing things we haven't seen from TJ. Yeah, we're learning. You know, we clearly valued TJ a ton, getting the contract done in training camp and wanting him to be a Minnesota Viking for a long time. Uh, but that's the coolest part is we're still learning some things about the player, and they're all positive. I mean, the statistics, you know, he's basically matched what he did in 10 games once he arrived last year. He's already matched that wow. uh, in nine games this year with a lot of football to play. 
Uh, but the toughness factor, a guy that is clearly working through something during the game in a very physical game, that was, you could probably feel it from up top, that was a physical football game. Uh, they were clearly trying to, you know, whether it was some of the plays that did get flagged, some of the ones that didn't, uh, there was some physical, physical play going on. And you had to know what you were signing up for, especially if you were dinged up uh, from a previous play. That individual Bavaro-esque effort uh, was a critical, critical field-flipping play. Um, in a game where you know we, we thought we were going to need a couple of those plays uh, to function and eventually get down in the red zone and get points every time. Uh, can't say enough about TJ. He's overcome a lot. Uh, just continues to be uh, a beacon for those quarterbacks who's ever in the game for us. Uh, finding him over the middle in critical moments or uh, when he gets the you know one-on-one -on -one matchups outside the numbers, he's winning those. Um, we're going to keep getting TJ as many touches as we can. He's having a very underrated year in the run game as well, paired with Josh Oliver. So complete three down player, and we're lucky to have him. You're old enough to remember Mark Bavaro. I am. Was it Monday Night Football against the Niners, I think, when he played for the Giants? I was young. I, my, my hair was not as uh, gray as it's now, or clearly as much as yours is. But, yeah, right. uh, <laughs> but uh, I would say that uh, growing up in New Jersey, you knew who Mark Bavaro was for sure. How, how would you describe Josh Metellus' approach to the game? I just think he's so consistent in his love of playing this game. Like he has such joy in success through the simplicity of just doing his job, but then thriving within that. And that's what really defines players in our defense, guys that do their jobs because their job affects the other 10 guys. But let's not make any mistake about it. There's plays that come across, uh, you know, a player, you know, those five to 10 snaps in a game where it's you and you've got to make that interception against Green Bay. You've got to tackle uh, that running back on a cutback for a TFL. You've got to get that ball when it goes into the pile when a Caleb Evans knocks it out. Uh, Josh, Josh Mattelis makes all of those plays. Yeah. Um, I just feel like we're so, so blessed and fortunate to have a guy like that. Every single time I address the team, I know I can look at Josh Metellus and he's going to be as engaged as ever, knowing that he has a C on his chest and what's most important to him is what's most important to me. And he's going to deliver that message hammer at home by his words, but more importantly, by how he plays the game. Last one. Um, here comes old Taysom Hill. Oh, goody. He's not a human. He's like a, he's like a trick in a Boo-Ray game, just all over the place. Uh, and, and he's coming off a really good game. He threw a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. Yep. Let him in carries with 11 runs. Taysom Hill, uh, he, like, how do you handle Taysom? Yeah, you got to have a plan for him in the run game because they're buying back you know, an extra hat in the run game. They can block everybody they want. And then he's as good as anybody in this league physically running with the ball in his hands. You got to have multiple guys uh, at that tackle point to try to get him on the ground. And then he is a former quarterback. He can make throws. He's proven that in this league. And they're not just wide open. He'll throw the ball on, you know, throw away from defenders. He'll see coverage. And so you really have to kind of, it's not your traditional, hey, this is just wildcat or uh, we can lock into these plays when, when he's in the game. They can do anything. They can throw screens. They can run keepers, play passes. Uh, you name it, they'll do it with him in the game. And it's changed the dynamic of their offense. And it's really been a long time of, of the same old movie, whether it was Drew Brees at quarterback or Derek Carr, Jameis Winston, it really doesn't matter uh, because when he goes in the game, whether he's playing tight end, receiver, he's on special teams, uh, he's a guy you just have to know where he is in every phase of the game. Great job, man. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Kevin O'Connell, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm Paul Allen. Much more around the corner on X's and O's on the KFAM Minnesota Vikings Radio Network and Vikings.com.